Now the last example of this section, uh, there's a typo in the book, so it's number seven, but it's actually number six. In a certain distribution of numbers, the mean is 60 and the standard deviation is seven. At least what fraction of numbers are between the following pairs of numbers? Give answers as common fractions, reduced to lowest terms. So we have 60, or excuse me, um, 39 and 81 are the cutoffs. So now the problem is, is we got to work backwards to figure out what K is before we can figure out what fraction lies between them. So, so that's what we want to know is, is what is K? Now the trick is, is they give you the mean, which is 60, and the standard deviation, which is 7. Now, if we kind of look at this problem for a second, 60 hopefully is right smack dab in the middle between these two other numbers. And we can check that by doing a little bit of subtraction. So if we said, okay, well, what's 60 minus 39, we get 21. So we had 21 on this side, and we can kind of see here that this is also going to be 21 as well. So we do get the same amount on both sides, but now the question is, is how does 21 relate back to our standard deviation? Now we can sort of see that, okay, well, if I got 21 and I got 7, well, there's kind of a relationship between those two numbers. But if you're not sure, here's the, here's the formula to find K. We want to look at this difference from the mean. And we want to divide it by the standard deviation. So the difference from the mean we can see is 21. No matter which side you look at, it's the same. So we get 21 and the standard deviation is 7. So that gives you a 3. So now we know what K is. So now we can plug it into our Chebyshev's formula. So we're going to get 1 minus 1 over 3 squared. And we know that that's 1 minus 1 over 9, which is 9 over 9 minus 1 over 9. So we get 8 over 9. Again, they've already got at least in the problem itself, so we don't need to put it in front of our fraction here. So 8 over 9 is going to be your fraction. Now, it gets a little bit more interesting when you've got decimals. You can see we got some couple more interesting cases here. But the process is still the same. we still got to look at what's the difference from the middle. So we're going to do a little bit of subtraction, and I, I always do it from both sides just to make sure it's the same. So if we say 60 minus 28.5, we get 31.5. And if we do it on the other side, it should be the same. 91.5 minus 60 is 31.5. So we do get the same result on both sides. So that's good. Now we got to figure out what K is. So we can do our 31.5 over 7. Now, we could not figure out what K is as a decimal by just dividing it, but we're going to want to keep it as a fraction. Sort of like we did on the previous problems, you like to have it as a fraction, an improper one. So we're going to see that this is going to have to be improper. But now the trick is, is how do we simplify it down? Well, that decimal point's got to go. So we're going to multiply by 10 on the top and bottom to get rid of it. So that gives you 315 over 70. But now we've got to try to reduce that down. So what goes into uh, 315 and 70? Well, hopefully you, you're screaming at me, 5. 5 goes into both of those. So let's see what that gives us. 315 divided by 5 equals 63. And 17 divide, or excuse me, 70 divided by 5 better be 14. Okay. But is that in lowest terms? It's not. There's still something else that goes in. And 
if you look carefully, you will see that 7 goes into both of those. So 30, 63 divided by 7 is 9. 14 divided by 7 is 2. And that's in lowest terms. So we can't go any smaller than that. Now we can use Chebyshev's again. So we got 1 minus 1 over 9 halves squared. So 1 over 1, or excuse me, 1 minus 1 over 81 over 4. And then we can do our little flip trick. And whoops. So now we can change our 1 into a common denominator fraction. And then we can subtract. So 71, or excuse me, 77 over 81. So the fractions aren't always going to be pretty, but they're doable. As long as you're careful with the steps, make sure you get a nice value for K, and then you can do it. This last problem is a little bit different because now they don't want what's in between those two. They want what's less than 48.8 or more than 71.2. Now, this problem seems like it's totally different, but it's really not. We're still going to do exactly the same steps as we did in the other ones, but there's a subtle twist at the end. So let's just start off the same way and figure out what K is. So let's see what we get. So 60 minus 48.8, it's 11.2. And on the other side, well, we can kind of see that's going to be 11.2 as well. So 11.2 is the difference from the mean. So now if we plug it in and put it over 7, well, we're going to have to multiply by 10 again to get rid of the decimal. And then we're going to divide something out of there. Well, I'm not sure what goes into both of those, but I know 2 does. So I'm going to use a 2 and see what that gets me. So if we divide this by 2, well, what do we get? 112 divided by 2 equals 56. So we have 56 over 35. Well, what's a common number, common factor of 56 and 35? Again, hopefully you're screaming at me, 7. So this is going to be 8 over 5. And now we're done with finding K. So now we can substitute in. So we can square the top and bottom. Then we got to flip it. And then, whoops, I did it again. And then we got to change the 1 into common denominator. So 64 over 64. And then we got to subtract those. So what's that going to be? 39. Now, normally that's where we would stop. But the question is not looking at what's between. So if we think about this for a second, this is the fraction that lies between. Shift my paper over a little bit. So this is what lies between. They want what's outside of what's in between. They want what's on the low side and on what's on the high side. <clears throat> so if we think of it this way, there's if there were 64 numbers, 39 of them would be between those cutoffs. 39 would be between those two cutoffs. So that means that the remaining 25 have to be outside. So we're going to steal this 25 over 64 and this is what lies outside. 
this is what they want. <clears throat> they want all the other numbers that are not in between. That's another way to think of it, is that these are the numbers that are not in between. So 25 of them out of 64 would have to be outside. So hopefully that is making sense to you a little bit. Uh, I know it can be a little bit uh, different, especially when you've got to find the value of K and then find what Chebyshev says. It's a two-layered problem, but I know you can do it. So that wraps up Chapter 12. So we got one more chapter left, Chapter 13. So we'll see you in the next video, and keep, keep strong and safe and healthy.